We need more Jimmys in the world, right? Jimmy, if you're Come listening, on, Jimmy. multiply Come on, yourself. Boy. Start having babies. <laughs> we, need, we need more Jimmys. Somebody clone him already. <laughs> Hello world, how's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. So, got a special treat for you. I'm here with Rob of Flip Aquatics. They've just been going hard this year. It's been been doing year. all kinds of cool big things. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. And one of them, which is this humongous monster tank. And this is gonna be all shrimp, right? Yeah, so my, my goal behind the tank is to have the largest shrimp tank in the world, or at least the largest shrimp only tank in the world. Um, which I personally don't know of anyone else that has a larger shrimp only tank. So that's my goal. Um, it's 480 gallons. It's 480. four foot by eight foot by 24 inches tall. And it is a, uh, it is an absolute monster. So yeah, vid videos don't do justice. Lu no. Lucas will tell you. No. Yeah. Well, I've seen this on his channel. And like the depth of it, like the videos oh, it's, really do no justice. It's crazy. Like, like this, this is as far as we can reach. Yeah. Yeah. Same with Rob. It's yeah, crazy. It's, so like this tank, yeah, it's just, if you think of like a 4 by 8 sheet of, of plywood that you put on the walls or a 4 by 8 sheet of drywall, that's the, that's the footprint of this tank. So yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. It's cool to see it in person. I, I love it. My desk is actually like right there. And all day, I just get to turn around in my chair and just stare at the tank. That is awesome. So you want to walk us through like what all is in this tank here? Absolutely. So Mike from Aqua Pros actually came up with the idea. I told him to just be creative. I actually wanted a completely different skate. But since he was the one with the, the creative mind and he had a vision, I trusted him. I think it came out really good. Uh, so what he did is he wanted to build three islands and then have like the, the empty dirt area kind of as like the ocean. And then have the three islands stand alone. So we did, um, I forget what type of wood this is, but it's a dark wood. Uh, we actually glued it to the dragon stone that's in here. And it, it actually worked out really well. We, we stuffed a bunch of um, narrow leaf java fern in here, regular java fern. Um, there's some trident java fern, but it really didn't do great. So we're hoping that bounces back. We got a ton of the, the bronze crypts in here. Um, they're actually looking more red than anything else. But we got some. Swords in the background. Uh, the substrate is actually Brightwall substrate, which I use in all my Taiwan Bees and Caridina tanks. Um, Brightwall was actually nice enough to sponsor this tank. And so with this, the reason we chose this soil was we want this to be a Taiwan Bee tank. And so my goal with this tank is to have 10,000 blue bolts in here. Um, it's actually gonna be 12,000. We're gonna add 1,000 every month for a full year. And with that, I want to make a video at the end of the year and be like, hey, we have $100,000 worth of shrimp in here because we retail the blue bolts for $10 a piece and 12,000 of them would be $120,000, which you got to factor in, you know, some might die. Um, you could also factor in that some might have babies. So at the end of the year, we might have 20, 30,000 shrimp in here. So you just don't know. So I'm, I'm just excited to show people what a monster shrimp tank looks like with a bunch of shrimp swimming through the current and everything. That's it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be interesting. Like, no one's ever really done it before, so to actually see it will be really cool. Oh, I can just imagine them now just wandering all over the place. Everywhere. Like, it's everywhere you look. It's going to be insane. Look. Yeah, because we have, like, be awesome. even, even down this dragon stone, like, shrimp will get in the little holes and everything yeah. and just hide. And so there's so much surface area in there. Like, there's so many places that you can't even see. Like, we only escaped the one side of the tank. Like the whole other side of the tank is equally as big as the front, but we, we didn't do anything back there just because we couldn't reach. <laughs> so it's a, uh, oh, it's nuts, man, but it's so much fun. It's not that like to have your business be your hobby, Lucas, you'll know this, is like a dream come true. Like every day I come to work, I'm like, yes. Like I can't wait for Monday. I can't wait to be here with the guys working and, uh, and bringing things like this to life is just such a cool thing. And so I, I absolutely love it. And I know people are going to ask, what lighting do you have on this? So currently we have the old Fluval 2.0s, um, which are great lights. We use them on our planted tank rack for a while. Um, but they don't really disperse light well enough for us in such a big footprint. And so we're actually going to be getting in Kessels. Um, Kessels are coming out with a new freshwater light. Um, I think it's the 360 or maybe the 720. I'm not 100% sure. 
but I'm working with them to have them because I want them to be actually hanging from the ceiling. Uh, I just think the overall presentation would look a lot yes, better. That would be nice. And uh, we actually have a plug up in the in the ceiling, so we can do all of our plumbing up there. We have we'll put on a timer and everything, and so you won't see any of the the stuff you see now. So when when you spend this much money on a big tank, you want it to look as good as possible. And so that's our goal. And you sell all this dragonstone and driftwood and plants yeah, so now we, too, don't you? We sell all the plants. We sell the moss. We sell all the um, the crypts. You know everything. The dragonstone. We don't sell this type of driftwood. Even the shrimp, right? We even sell the shrimp, the mono shrimp that are in here right now. Uh, we sell every pretty much anything you'd see in here. We sell. We're gonna start selling the brightwell. Um, it's just a matter of time. So are you? That'll be good. There's. Yeah, there's really no one selling it. No, there's not. And so there I, needs to be. Yeah, I recommend it to everyone, and, and they're like, oh, where do we get it from? I'm like, right. I don't right. know. That's so, why I actually had Rob get me, what, 15 bags of Brightwell? Yeah, that's why you're here. He, yeah. he drove, oh wait, it's going to be 10 hours round trip or more. He even got a speeding ticket because of it, <laughs> just to come pick up 15 bags of Brightwell. It's good so, stuff. It is good stuff. It does break down a little bit. Um, but as far as most substrates, it holds up pretty well. Um, a lot of substrates thing. break down real quick, and this stuff seems to do the best out of, out of the, most of them that we tested. Yeah, I've, I've tried ADA before and seen other people use Brightwell versus ADA, and it seems to actually hold up. Yeah, and, I, and I really like ADA as well. I think it's a great soil. Yeah, but. it's good, good stuff, especially for growing plants and other yeah. whatnot. You have a sump filter on this, right? I do. So all it is really is I just wanted more water volume, and uh, I just needed a place for a return pump. So because I had the overflows, I had to utilize them. So we did it super, super simple. Um, in all of our tanks here, we utilize matten filters, um, which if you don't know what a matten filter basically is, just a big piece of foam. Uh, we actually have two of them down in here. And basically all it does is it just collects debris. Um, it'll collect the big stuff. Um, it'll grow beneficial bacteria in it. And uh, this one we're, we're mainly just using um, to soften the water noise. And oh, so, uh, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, so it's just, it's nothing crazy. It's just something a little extra. And if it ever gets clogged, it's low enough that it'll just overflow over the top. And then we know we need to clean it. And so obviously it's, I mean, you made the comment that it's it's pretty clear. Um, yeah. So it's doing the job. Yeah. And uh, the mono shrimp will keep up with the algae, hopefully. And, uh, and we'll be good to go moving forward. And I won't lie, I was a little worried when you were first setting up this tank with the uh, plants that you were using were actually emerged grown. Yep. And often they will melt back transition yep. and it causes lots of algae problems and water clarity problems. But Thank you can God, see that this is proof that that's not always the case. And this really turned out really well. And if you guys look on the side of this tank, like you see all the way down that. That's how clear that is. And to really test water clarity, get on the side of your tank, and you'll see the difference. If there's any cloudiness, yeah, the tank you'll this big. See it with that depth. If it's not clear, you'll know it even front to back because it's four feet long. Right. That's right. like looking at a fifty-five gallon from the side. Right. And so, yeah, so if we true. if we ever run into that problem, then I'll have to I'll have to figure out a good solution to clear it up. Yeah, that's let's amazing. go. You want to go check out the rest of the warehouse? Yeah, yeah, because you got a whole shrimp kingdom out there. I do, I do got a shrimp kingdom. <laughs> All right, let's do it. The shrimp kingdom. <laughs> King Rob. I don't know about all that. The real shrimp king. No, don't start saying that. <laughs> Chris. All right, so here we are in what? This is one room of... This is one of three. So this is actually our third shrimp room. We started naming them, but we haven't kept up on it. I think this one was, uh, uh, like, the first one was Shrimp City. The next one was Shrimp uh, State or something. I don't, I don't remember how it went. But they all had different names, and this one was, like, Shrimp, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I can't even remember. But this is the biggest one. Uh, so we have, I believe, 35 ponds out here. It goes 8, you know, 10, 20, I don't know. It's about 35 ponds. Each pond can house, house upwards of a thousand shrimp. Um, we usually stock them between the six to eight hundred range, just so it's not, you know, nothing crazy. Um, we only keep neocaridinas out here. Uh, we also keep a mono shrimp, which is a caridina species. 
Anything that basically requires harder water will come out here. Um, so like even like our, our creamy zebras, uh, which is the Caradine and Bobolti zebra striped, um, those ones are kept out here. And so the way it works is we keep all of our cherry shrimp in one row. So like that whole middle section is cherry shrimp. The far wall is the, the more, so like, okay. So the very, very far wall is all like the, the expensive stuff. So it'd be like the, the Bobolti's, um, maybe some black rows be over there, but that's like mainly like the tigers and stuff. So like anything that requires harder water will be over there. The next two rows, um, so like that whole peninsula section is all cherry shrimp. So we have 10 ponds of cherry shrimp. So we try to stock about 10,000 to 8,000 cherry shrimp at any given time. That's crazy. Um, yeah, you, you'd be surprised how many cherry shrimp still sell to this day. Um, even though there's such a, like an old shrimp. And then, uh, and then this is like all of our colorful shrimps. So like our oranges, our blues, um, our greens, our bloodies, our blacks, things like that. Can we look at these blues? Yeah, absolutely. Quick? You wanna, okay, let, me, let me hit these. This is just turning off the air. That way we can actually see in there. I'll actually move this back. Oh, there they are. Look at all that blue. So right now we probably Big have about beautiful. four, 400 in here, I would say. It doesn't look like it, but you never really know until you start catching them. They ate those Indian almond leaves up real nice. Though. They did. We need to get some new ones in there. Just add a little antioxidants to the water, some tannins. And, uh, yeah, it, any, any leaves, natural stuff is good for, you know, shrimp. Do you sell these? No, we yeah. actually had those custom made for this room because we couldn't do matten filters in here. And uh, Mark makes those for us. Nice. Yeah, so we're is at this a, an overflow. Oh, and that's where your overflow goes. Yeah, so what it is, this is actually where our water comes in. Okay. Um, which is this line right here. It connects up here to a uh, inch and a half line, and then our our water change will actually come from all these two hundred seventy five gallon totes behind us. Ooh. We'll pump those full of RO water. We'll remineralize them, and then uh, we'll turn a pump on for about ten minutes, uh, once a week, maybe every other week, and it'll just do a huge water change on this whole room and that so it, it just overflows right out so nice. it's it's all about keeping it simple yes um, when you have limited amount of time you want to you want to pick the things you spend time on and water changes is not one I want to spend time <laughs> working on you don't blame and so as simple as it can be the better it is but yeah so this room's probably mm -hmm. halfway stocked right now we'll probably get another import in um, around next month which that's the other thing we do sell all imported shrimp um, just because we we simply cannot breed enough to keep up with demand. So it's nice having people like Lucas in the hobby that is going out there and is actually breeding them because that introduces some good strains into into the shrimp world and uh, it really helps out. But currently well, we're we wouldn't have those shrimps if there wasn't any importers. Everything comes from imports at one yes, point. It, it just does. takes breeders like you to get them really healthy, looking good, working with them. And so it all works hand in hand. Hopefully one day we can all sit down and be like, wow, everything that everything that we sell here in the United States is USA bread, which would be nice. It's a great dream. Hopefully it happens. Um, but if, if not, hopefully the hobby just keeps growing and we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and importing more stuff. Yeah, and so at least we'll have fun doing it. Oh, every day we have fun doing yes. it. So it's going to be good. But yeah, so that's all this stuff. Um, this whole side will be a mono shrimp, except for the last two ponds, which are going to be converted to monos. And so we try to stock... How many are there? Two, four, six, eight. So we try to stock 8,000 of monos. Wow. Um, all the time. So monos and cherry shrimp are definitely our biggest sellers. And um, yeah, it's, it's nuts. So That's a lot of shrimp. That is a lot of shrimp. But that, that means it's good for me. If I need a you know 200 of mono shrimp to go on the 480, I can just right. come out here and catch them and it's good to go. Yeah, that's the beauty part of it. Now this room is under construction, but it is definitely getting there. I actually... I have not even done an update video on this, so if you post this rather soon, you'd be the first one to uh -oh. show this to the world. And so, this is going to be our planet tank room, our snail room, and our nano fish room. Um, so we'll have 45 uh, 20 gallon longs of nano fish, we'll have 15 20 gallon longs of snails, and then we have 24 40 gallon breeders of plants. And um, hopefully that's going to be a good mix, it will give us a good test. And uh, we'll see how we want to go from there, see if nano fish are a thing that we really want to pursue. And, um, and hopefully we'll just keep growing. So 
Lucas, hopefully the next time you're back, we'll actually have another building. Yeah. You never know. It's completely different. Completely different from what it was last time. Oh, it's here. so different. Like, And it's hard to keep track of so many people come and visit. Um, but some people will come and they haven't been here in like two years and they can't even recognize it. Because this, the room we were just in used to be like a wide open warehouse room uh, that just had junk in it, to be honest. It was just random tanks that we got from, you know, going to auctions or uh, random filters that we had that were just left over that I'm never going to use, but we had the room, so we stored them. So now we're really getting down to the point where we only keep things that we're using um, and, and we just keep expanding and making the space more utilized. Um, because, Lucas, you'll know this, your whole house is taken over by fish tanks. Like, you just run out of space. You never think you're going to run out of space, but you do. And then it's like, oh gosh, like where am I gonna put this? What am I gonna do with that? And so that's, we're just trying to utilize as much space as possible and make it as efficient as possible. And so that's why we even redid this room. Everyone's like, oh, you're always doing construction. It's like, yeah, because <laughs> we're always trying to be better. We're always trying to do things differently and, and make the process as smooth as possible. So yeah. that's this room. And a lot of people don't realize that even when you do end up with all these tanks, you still realize you need more tanks. You always need more tanks. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter where you're at. Like, yeah. we had these these four, 24 um, 40 gallon breeders set up. These just look nice over here. They do. They're kind of, I, I, I didn't want to reuse the wood, but I couldn't justify the expense of buying shelves for it. So I was like, you know what, we already have them, we'll utilize them. These were actually from our last room. And uh, it, it actually worked out pretty good. They're, they're perfect height from the ground for us to do water, automatic water changes on them. On the tall ones aren't too tall. And honestly, I, I thought it would take us a long time to uh, get these tanks filled up with stuff in them. And it's only been probably about a month and we're already got them mostly utilized. Um, now granted, we can fit a lot more plants in here, but we just don't, don't have them yet. Well, they're all looking healthy. They do. So, I mean, there's some browning in some places. We got algae in a couple other places. Um, but like me and you talked about earlier, we just need to throw some of the mono shrimp in here and uh, really let them go to town, the algae, put some neorite snails in here, uh, maybe a couple of and uh, and really start utilizing it. So we're getting to the point now where we're going to start testing out new things. Um, one of which is down below, which you, which we kind of talked about earlier. Yeah. Which we actually took a matten filter. So this is a 40 gallon matten filter. We laid it down flat. We drilled a bunch of little holes in it. And then we're sticking the rhizomes of the plants down in there just to hold them in place. And then what we're gonna do is for extra flow, we're actually gonna get our lift tubes that we use for matten filters, stick them down in the hole, and then it, can create, it creates directional flow from different parts of the tank oh. without using a power head. That'll be really nice. And so, yeah, so it's just utilizing what we already have. Um, this was leftover sponge that we already used in a tank, so we weren't going to use it again. Yeah. And it's just putting it in the tank and making and it work. that's real smart to do with your plants, because if you just float them up, that rhizome is going to grow all crazy. Yep. This way, all the plants will grow the same direction. The way um, they are It won't to. pinch the rhizome at all. And then we could even take, like, baby plants. So, like, this was a tiny little rhizome that broke off with one little leaf. So we'll actually grow that out for maybe a month or two and let it, you know, reproduce a couple more leaves and then we'll actually be able to sell it. Whereas like in a bigger tank, we may have, like in this tank, if we saw just a little one flowing around, it's possible that the employees would have thrown it away. Um, you just never know. So like this, this is what you typically see. So we actually want to get these to where they're pushed down into some kind of foam in one way or another. And then they're all growing straight up like you just said. So we're getting there. It takes a little time, um, but I mean, if you if you love what you do, then it's it's easy. Right. It's all fun and games, right? It's all fun and games. Very nice. Yep. So we only have one more room to see. This is our uh, this is gonna be our Caradina room. And so this is all of our more expensive shrimp. Um, it's all the ones that require buffered substrate. And what that means is they need a pH of less than six. So it's a little noisy in here just because all the matten filters are running. Um, but I want to say we have about, about 90 to 100 tanks in here. I don't know the exact count, but they're all Caradina. Uh, some of them we're not currently optimized using, but like you can look in here, we got some black Pintos. Um, we actually have a really, really nice pair of Galaxy Pintos in here, which I don't know where they're at right now. 
probably hiding behind the subwasser tank. And then, uh, yeah, we just got all kinds of stuff. We got Red Galaxy, Black Galaxy, Blue Bolts, Red Pintos, Black Pintos. Um, just a mix of all different Taiwan Bs. We got Crystal Reds over here. Just tons and tons and tons of stuff. And so this is what's fun for me. And the cool thing is if, if you don't sell something uh, quick enough, it actually starts reproducing and breeding. And so I actually have a really cool thing that actually bred for us that... Uh, it makes me really excited, which oh, is yeah. um, this thing. They're a pair of high grade red fancy tigers. Oh yeah. And so we have two of them that we left mm. in there because they were both buried and then we let the babies hatch. So the babies are actually, there's some really, really small ones. Like there's a small yeah, one right here. Yeah. There's some small ones in the corner, um, but they're also bigger ones too. And so it's cool to see what they produce. Yeah, it's it, it's a blast. Like this is what makes so it fun for me. So these were the parents. Yep. Now those those, nice parents. those might not have been the exact parents. Those were at least the buried females. We might not have kept no. the male. Right, right. That's uh, that's pretty exciting. They're yeah. everywhere. There's little babies everywhere. Yeah, that's the cool thing. Is like just breeding some of this stuff makes it a lot of fun. It does. Um, and you'll notice like our tanks aren't the most well. Um, like they're not very clean. Like if you look at this tank, like there's a bunch of stuff on it. But for a place that doesn't have retail customers, like this is what you want anyway. Like yeah, it sucks. For a shrimp like tank. I probably wouldn't want this because I actually want to look in there and make sure everything's doing good. So we actually put some Nearite sales in here, uh, which they do great on algae. You can actually see it just makes its way around the corners, and so everywhere you look, it's actually eating in a decent amount. Mm -hmm. um, but we only have, I think we have two in there. So one's been on the front panel for about a month now. Shrimp's and then, working on it too. Yeah, shrimp's working on it. And this is actually, is this the tank or it's the next tank over? It's hard for me to even keep them straight. Um, but what we do is we have tanks, like if we find like a really nice blue bolt that's buried, we'll put them in one tank and let them hatch out the babies and then we'll keep them for X amount of time. Nice. And so, uh, so yeah, so my employees- So they're not all the imported. They're not all imported, but I would say like even, so the great debate is what is an imported shrimp? Is it when you get them in, if they had babies in the bag when you order them, are those USA bred? Um, so we always say we have to breed them two generations at least in our tanks for them to be USA bred. So like even if all these had babies, we would still sell them when they grew up as imported. Just because we don't want to blur the line. Um, only, things, only things that we list as USA bred or things that we personally bred for like two, three, four generations, or stuff that we buy from hobbyists that we know are breeding them locally, and then we'll sell that as USA bread as well. So we try to be, we try to be 100% as transparent as humanly possible. That's um, the best way to do it. Yeah, because if you're transparent up front, then you can never really have issues. Right. Focus trim, focus. Nice blue bowl grazing. Yeah, they're, focus. they're all mixed in. Probably because oh, there we go. I was about to say probably because all the algae on and them. And then the glare. The glass. Yeah, the glare because all the lights are. So really you can bright. see he's just munching away on that algae. He locks it. He locks it all. Yeah, it's crazy. All the different algae. Yeah, it's all pretty much the same algae. It's just. I mean, that's just free shrimp food right there. Just free shrimp food. It does get a little annoying, so I'm starting to get on the guys a little bit more about cleaning just the front panel of glass. Yeah. Um, but right now, it's just this is the busy season. Um, so this weekend, actually, when Lucas is doing this video, is Black Friday weekend. It's just after Thanksgiving. And so it does get a little crazy. And so we usually slack in the crazy times, but come January, when everything slows down, um, we'll, we'll have a good solid month of getting in here and making sure everything's healthy and doing well. But yeah, it's fun, man. It, it is. is fun. This is amazing. Anything else you want to see? I love it. Let's just look around in these tanks a little more. Oh, so these are all things that we're actually breeding. He's even got tanks over here on the counter. Yeah, so these are... Nice. I love this setup, too. Oh, yeah. With it... the sink and the nets and the paper towels. You can never have enough paper towels. Oh, never. Don't forget your dehumidifiers. No, you got to have a dehumidifier. Yeah. Um, this is all stuff that we've been breeding for a little while. So we got Royal Blues. Dang, that one in the bank. Let me turn this the lights corner. on this new glare. Just 
there you go. There we go. Nice. These are all royal blues. These are all really nice ones. I like how that subwoofer thing's clinging to the mat. Yeah. Then we got the mini subwoofer thing, the mini paleo. Yeah. And these are um, orange eyed blue tigers and some blondes. And we got a Swayze rabbit snow. Yep. You still selling those? Not as much. Because we, we kind of stopped selling snails for a while until we... Get the room done. Until we got the room done, yeah. So we haven't sold snails probably in about six months. Wow, this one's huge. Yeah, that's a monster. Jeez. Yeah, she's bred a lot for us. Hmm. This is probably a good two and a half inches, I would say. Yeah, maybe three. Yeah, these are the super tigers that we've been working on. We've never really been able to produce enough to sell. Um, we always sell to people that, that come to the warehouse and like, oh, I have to have them. Like Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> then I kill him. Nah, that's all right. So Oops. we're we're trying to rebuild them up, but these ones are always a lot of fun. These are beautiful. Yeah, they look like the orange-eyed blue tigers, except they got the black eyes. They got those real nice broad stripes on them. Yeah. Stripes and, uh, are really nice on them. Yeah, they've been doing well for us. And then my favorite ones, probably, are the Super Princess Bees. Yeah, these are really cool. So we've been, we've been breeding these for... We've actually had this train for probably about six to eight months. And uh, they just recently started breeding. So like there's a there's a baby in the back. There's actually a tiny baby in the back, like middle. Let's see, I'm moving just barely on here. I want to see a macro for that. Oh, I see it over there, there on that. Yeah, right by that big one. Yeah. In the glass. And so, uh, so it's fun. It, it's, it's a cool. different kind of substrate in here. This is actually the ADA. Okay. So the person we got them from had ADA soil, and so we wanted to mimic exactly what they were doing. And so we got the same soil, used the same uh, remineralizer, and uh, and got the tank set up identical to it so that we just made sure we had success with them. And so far, so good. They're breeding. They're, they're looking healthy. And nice visit in there. That's actually a type of moss. Is it? Believe it or not, it's a... Is it um, a hooker eye? I don't know what type of moss it is, but Amanda got it. And, and I told her, wow, that fizzin looks really good. And then she instantly corrected me. Yeah, I bet you that's a hooker eye moss then. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really rare. Yeah, it grows nice and nice and slow. Jeez, look at her. She's got so many eggs, they're like about to fall out of her. No way. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah, she's gorgeous. So that's fun. So it's good to see that the shrimp are doing well. I enjoy breeding stuff. That's how I got into the hobby. And so it's fun to actually have a couple tanks that... I get to mess with it. Right. Mm. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, man. I, I definitely awesome. enjoy it. And then uh, over here, like, we're, we're in the midst of construction, so we got just tanks everywhere. Um, this whole half of the row, like, this whole rack we don't even really use. Uh, we mainly just use it for duckweed production, which sounds silly, um, but we, we do sell a decent amount of duckweed. Um, this whole rack from... From here down, we're not really using. We just have some random fishing and stuff. Um, all this stuff is like a mixture of crystals, some Taiwan bees, some tigers, um, some crystal blacks, some golden bees, and um, just some random stuff. So this this system doesn't have organization yet. We're actually taking this whole rack down, and we're gonna extend it out, and we're gonna do the tanks this way instead of this way. And so this will be 15, 20 gallon lawns instead of like two forties and 15 tens. So it's gonna help us like expand a little bit. And then this whole system, this will rack against the wall we were using for our nano fish. Um, it just wasn't enough room. And the way we have it set up wasn't ideal for nano fish. So we're actually gonna convert this all over to selective breeding. And that's what I'm gonna use for like what I wanna breed and what I wanna have fun with. And so we're going to redo all that eventually. Um, hopefully, it probably won't be this year to be honest, but it'd be nice if it was. And then this is mainly all crystals. Um, some random stuff, but mostly crystals. We got tangerine tigers. White cloud minnows. White cloud. We got some funky ones in there that we couldn't sell <laughs> because they got the, oh, the backs all messed up. Oh yeah, lots of tangerine tigers. This is one that we actually breed the the yellow King Kongs. 
they're, they're such pro prolific breeders. We actually, we oversold them on accident and we had like six left. And so we put them in this tank and they've been in there for about probably six months. And now they're right back up to where they need to be. They got nice. tons of little babies in there. One and a half wafer. Yeah, that's back when there used to be fish in there. Ah. So it just shows how much, uh, like how much we're going through tanks that don't even keep up on it. Yeah, that's actually like or just our mixed tank. There's some nice ones in there, though. In these. Yeah, those are some funky ones. All kinds of fish. Yeah, here's a fish tank. Yeah, this is like a whole community. Yeah, this is the... They call them the L144s, the blue-eyed albinos. And then there's some random um, endlers in there. Um, there's also some of the least killifish, the little live bear. Wow, those bristlenose are all over the place in there. Yeah, there's a ton. Jeez. Yeah, that tank, I don't, I don't know how, man. It just keeps doing great. We just do our water changes on it, feed it, and it does just fine. Then you see tanks like this, just got <laughs> ton, tons of algae. Mother Nature, Mother Nature's great equalizer. Yep. You don't have plants? Grow some algae. Grow some algae, and we do too. And the tanks like that we don't keep plants. up on. These guys are really nice. What are these? The red pintos? Yeah, the, actually, these are the um, white fancy tigers um, okay. by Carbon. Oh. So Carbon, these are the ones he brought to Aquatic Experience. Nice. Um, we're actually going to be listing these beginning of December. Um, and start. we're going to start importing his shrimp too. Oh, uh, that'll be really nice. Yeah, he's, he's a really good breeder out of Taiwan. He breeds everything himself. And so it's really cool to work with someone that knows the lineage of their shrimp and where they came from and how healthy they are. He's created quite a few, hasn't he? He, he has, has, man. Tons of awards. Yeah, he does a really, really, really good job. And so it's nice to work with someone like him. I got some of his Santa Clauses. Do you, Wixie? Check this tank out. His tank on the corner. Oh, yeah. You got a bunch of them still. Oh, yeah. I love yeah, we haven't even shrimp. listed them. So they're they're just now clearing the 30-day quarantine. It is the season for these guys. I know. We're going to do a big promo oh, on oh, them. Oh, <laughs> They're freaking cool. They are. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And then the rest of the tanks will just be crystal reds. And these are nice, great crystal reds. Yeah, they actually, we, we get these the hookup on crystal reds. Which, crystal reds is our other big seller. We actually go through, I want to say we go through about at least 600 a month. Wow. Which is insane. It's a lot of shrimp. There's no way you're going to breed that many unless you got it. Huge, huge farm. No, like I would literally have to have this whole room dedicated to breeding just crystal this. reds. Yeah. Which is possible, but. But is that all you want to do with your No. It's like the Taiwanese, they're so good at breeding this stuff already. And at least Caradina wise, it comes in healthy already. So there's no reason not to buy it from them. Right. Like they can produce it for cheaper than I can breed it. Which is, you know, just crazy to think of. Yeah, I don't even know what's down here, to be honest. Black neons. Black neons, yep. Oh, there's some plants. Some cherry barbs. More cherry barbs. So you still do got a few fish left. A few. They yeah, actually have a decent amount of cherry barbs. Yeah. Everyone always sees us and they're like, hey, like I need a couple of males for breeding. You mind if I take some? I'm like, no, go ahead. There you go. Do your thing. You got a good color on them. Yeah, like the males look really good. Yeah. And we've had these for, oh my gosh. Look, since 424 is when they cleared quarantine, so we bought these in March wow. of this year. So we've had them ever since. I remember when you were first getting the fish and I actually grabbed quite a few from you. They yeah, actually, you did. They all ended up doing really well. So that's crazy. So you were here probably around the beginning yeah, of the year. Like, yeah, because you were just getting them. Yeah. Yeah. That that's sounds crazy. about right. Yeah, because I think I really I started getting Nana fish in November of last year. Yeah. It was around that time. That's insane. That's crazy. Time flies. It does. It goes quick, man. It does. Yeah, it's nuts. 
So obviously you can tell these tanks get neglected. Yeah. It happens. It does happen. I mean, we, we know it. Oh, yeah. Life I gets busy. I definitely know it. I definitely know it. I love how you even smash this little tank over here. And just to give you guys a better look at how many tanks are really in here, do a quick little pan by. It's just like... No, there's you. definitely a Yes, definitely enough. Well, no, there's never enough. Right? Never enough. You can always have more. Right. That's, this is awesome. I can't wait to see you get it all done. And yeah, it's getting there. It, it, it's getting vision. there. Um, I don't think Here's we'll ever tank. stop. That's uh, actually Amanda. She took it to Aquatic Experience one year, um, and then we brought it back, and she was just like, oh, you know, just set it up at the warehouse, and it's been here ever since. So that's like two years worth of growth. We had some shrimp in there at one point. There's still a couple small ones in there. But that's one of those things that we just top off with water. We've never really done water changes on it. And it just, it's just it's a little ecosystem. That's cool. We feed it, it converts, it does its thing, and hey, it's there. It's awesome. <laughs> well, Lucas, thank you I so much it. for the tour, man. Yeah, thank you for the tour. I love the setup. Love Absolutely. what the future is going to hold for you. Gonna be awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to is. see all them shrimp in that 480. I know it's that's gonna, gonna be, be fun. Sweet. Oh, that is gonna be something for the eyes for yeah. sure. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Well, Rob, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lucas, and everybody watching. All you LR Brett's followers out there. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Go guys. check out Flip thank at you. Flip Aquatics. He's got a channel too. If you guys didn't know that. Yeah. Flip so Aquatics on YouTube. Out. I'll link it up at the end of this video. You guys can hit the link. Awesome. Thank you, Lucas. You're welcome. All right, guys. Till next time. Have a great one. Peace, y'all. Sweet. Thanks, man.